say you may be God with the blood of the Lord. Just, 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 just level with me on this, right? Here I am, and here is someone else. But we both believe in God. Now we decide to have an argument, but the argument has increased, has uh, increased to a, 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 a conflict, a conflict. And so I'm saying, oh God in heaven, give me the strength to beat him. And the other man is saying, oh God in heaven, give me the strength to beat him. I mean, who is going to win? Who is going to win? The one, the, they're both calling upon God. And they're calling upon God for a final thing. Uh, God is going to declare someone righteous, isn't he? But I'm not even going to judge that. Because I tell you the truth, do not pray to God for a violent thing. Because if you're in a position to cause violence, I say, hold your horses, literally, or hold your tank. Hold your missiles. And think about what you're doing. Because right now, right now, we've got a situation where God is seeing, he is seeing the violence. And he does not like the violence. He does not like that life is taken unnecessarily. The country wars, another country wars, and they're all praying upon God to help them to win. Let me tell you something. Let's sit at the table and let's reason with one another and say, listen, if we war, lives are going to be lost. So the one thing we've got to do is to make sure we don't lift up arms. To make sure we don't lift up arms. And so now, what we do is we pray to God to be able to deal with this, to sort it out. Because when you pray to God, you're not saying, God, I have a problem. You're saying, God, we need the solution. We do not want to upset you with violence. But we want to call upon you for solution, for peace. You know, it, it, it's interesting to know, because uh, I don't want to go into politics, it's interesting to, to know that uh, the Palestinians and the Israelis are both believers in God. They are, both countries, both states are believers in God. The Palestinians must be calling upon God. I believe so. I believe so. Um, and this kind of happens. Because if we are praying, look, 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 what I'm saying here, because God is a merciful God. I know that. God is a forgiving God. I know that. But many people do not know this. So what we've got to do now, is what we've got to see happening, is to say, Heavenly Father, no sin. The life that you have created is so precious. It is so precious that life that you have created that God sent his, and I know, because when I'm going to say this, there's going to be some objections. But I'm not here for hearing objections, really. I tell you this right now, that God sent his only begotten son as a sacrifice for your, for our precious souls. And men have completely wiped that out the way and, and, and considered life as though it was a piece of paper scrunched up and thrown in the bin. That's how it's happening in Israel. 
in Palestine, in Gaza. That's what's happening in the Congo land of Sofia. That's what's happening in here. Look what here. Because we're not having war right now in Piccadilly Gardens, that's are we? But there is a different type of war going on. A different type of war. It is a spiritual war. Because the spirit is warring against the flesh. And if you are walking according to the flesh, you ain't gonna like what I'm saying right now. I'm telling you the truth. You will not like what I'm saying. But if you are in the flesh, and you know what I'm saying, but you have to step forward, hey, there is a blessing still for you. There is a salvation still for you. Look what I'm gonna say now. Keep because talking. I need to, no one can interject. To to because in Sodom and Gomorrah, the sins had reached to a high degree. It reached to a high degree that it could not continue any further. The angels came down to Abraham and said, "He's been sinning." No, because you know they know that Abraham.